जय माता दी गाइज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स दैट इज लुब्रिकेशन लुब्रिकेशन वाई नीडेड वेल वन रीजन इज टू रिड्यूस वियर एंड टीयर सेकेंड रीजन इज टू डिसिपेट हीट इट टेक्स हीट ऑल्सो लॉन्ग विज इट सेल्फ एंड थर्ड इज टू अवॉइड क्रोजन इट फॉर्म्स अ प्रोडक्टिव लेयर सो दैट क्रोजन डज नॉट टेक प्लेस दीज आर द्री रीजन दैट वी प्रोवाइड लुब्रिकेशन नाउ some of the properties that i am going to discuss about lubrication is one is viscosity viscosity is again restriction to flow i would say kitna thick is oil right now it's simple when there are these two surfaces and the clearance is this much in between them and if we have got oil which is so thick will it flow in between no so there will be no lubrication if i have got clearance this much and the oil is very thin it flows like this in between will there be any lubrication no so guys lubrication viscosity plays a very important role in lubrication that is very very important to know second thing is carbon residue when lube oil burns how much carbon does it leave that is another thing if a lube oil has got a lot of carbon residue that means that lube oil is going to make your pistons plungers very very dirty not good a lot of maintenance is going to be required right guys so we want lube oil Which has less carbon residue in it. Copy it. Now let's talk about flash point. Flash point is again that temperature at which lube oil, when heated, it it has got so much vapor that if shown a naked stick, a naked fire, it will catch naked stick or spark. It will catch fire. I'll repeat one and once again, guys. Flash point is that temperature of lube oil at which it forms sufficient vapors, which when shown naked spark catches fire. Copy it, guys. Okay. What is pore point again? That temperature below which lube oil ceases to flow, stop flowing. I take so in case of water, what is the pore point? Zero degree centigrade below which it will become ice and it will not flow. What is cloud point? Is that temperature at which lube oil changes? Uh, forms wax crystals so basically it will be very difficult for it to flow and in case it is flowing it will choke the filters now this all we have studied when we were talking about fuel oil as well so i have gone quite fast but this is important what is tvn i hope uh, you will be going through uh, one other topics where i have discussed in main engine fuel system when i talk that we have got air we have got fuel and we have got lubes right then they go to the engine and then we get work heat and everything and when i talked about lubes out here i said it has got 97% hydrocarbons 2.5% calcium and 0.5% sulfur now what is this calcium it is it can be calcium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide now we know calcium or potassium hydroxide are basically basic in nature why are we adding them now see i hope you guys remember when i talked about uh, i will uh, i talked about emissions and i talked about air system wherein in fuel we are burn we have got sulfur right when we are burning sulfur out here sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide are formed when they combine with moisture they form sulfuric acid which is which is very corrosive so in the combustion chamber also sometimes when gases are there water can get condensed so sulfuric acid is formed in the liner which is very very corrosive so this lube oil when has basicity it neutralizes that acid when it neutralizes that acid so acidic corrosion does not take place which is very very important for you to remember okay when i talk about main engine two stroke i will be today giving a description and then talk about its lubrication thing this is a cylinder liner this is a piston this is a cylinder head these are the piston rings fitted this is a piston rod now main engine is divided into two areas in between comes a stuffing box copy it guys and then it goes to the crosshead bearing which is converting the rotary motion of the crankshaft of the connecting rod this is the connecting rod guys into reciprocating movement of the piston 
So basically, this is rotating like this. The connecting rod is moving like this. But because of crosshead bearing, piston is moving straight like this. Right? And that is why crosshead bearing is required out here. And over here, we have got a crank pin bearing. Why a bearing is required? Where when the two different objects are moving in different direction, or one is stationary and another is moving, we need a bearing, lubrication thing in between. Like over here, when the crank shaft is rotating, and this is slender uh, main engine frame, we have got main bearing fitted over here. Over here, the crank, web crank pin and connecting rod are rotating in different directions. So we have got a crank pin bearing over here. We have got a crosshead bearing over here because connecting rod is rotating in a rotary motion, but piston rod is rotating in a is in a reciprocating motion. So we have got a crosshead bearing over here. So these are three important bearings that you have to remember: crosshead bearing, crank pin bearing, and main bearing. If there is a bearing, you need lubrication, you need oil. So first, let's talk about this system. This below the engine, there is a big tank which is called main engine sub. It has got an oil which is called crankcase oil. This section below this section is called crankcase below the stuffing box. Okay. So this oil is taken by a pump. This is a lube oil pump, centrifugal pump. I hope you remember I told you. In main engine lube oil pump, there is a centrifugal pump fitted because over here we do not need much pressure, but we need a lot of flow. So it's a centrifugal pump fitted inside the tank, so there are no issues of suction ever. It takes suction, it goes to a lube oil cooler. Why? Because when the oil goes over here and then comes back into the sump, it gets heated. So this hot oil needs to be cooled. It goes to a lube oil cooler, which is again a plate type cooler. On one side the lube oil is flowing, on other side. It can be sea water or fresh water flowing, which cools the lube oil. Then we have got a filter fitted. Why a filter? We've got we have got any metal particles from the bearings or anywhere coming into the crankcase. We do not want them to further go into the tank. We want them to be separated. So filter is used over here. Now filter has got a very fine mesh of 50 microns. What does that mean? Filter has got holes in it. Each hole is of 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 meters. So you can imagine the size of the filter hole, very small, very fine. So even if anything comes of a size greater than this, it will be caught in the filter. Copy it. Now, this oil, one branch goes to the main bearing. Now this I have shown one unit. We have got six units. So we will have bearings over here and after every unit. So if six units, we will have seven main bearings. If seven units, we will have eight main bearings. Calculate yourselves why I am saying so. Okay, so it will go to all the main bearings. Also, one tapping will go to the crosshead bearing. Okay, when I show you the diagram, you will see that this goes to the telescopic pipe. Why? Because this crosshead bearing is moving up and down. So, we need a pipe which can also allow with it move up and down because constant lube oil is required over here. You getting a point? See, guys, crosshead bearing is moving up and down. If suppose I fix a pipe over here, I need a pipe which is flexible. Otherwise, it can't move or this pipe will break. So it is called a special pipe which is called a telescopic pipe. In this, there is one pipe and another pipe is inside it. This pipe is connected to the crosshead bearing. So when this crosshead bearing goes up, this pipe also moves up. This crosshead bearing comes down. This pipe also moves down. And constantly oil is flowing over here. Copy it guys. So through this telescopic pipe, oil comes to the crosshead bearing. Now first it lubricates it. Now in crosshead bearing, it divides into three branches. One lubricates the crosshead bearing. Another branch grows into the piston rod. From there into the piston, cools the piston and comes back. Because we have to cool the piston as well. Okay. And the third branch through the connecting rod goes and lubricates the crank and bearing. After doing this, all this oil drops back into the crankcase. So this is the crankcase oil. Now we have got a separate oil, cylinder oil, which has got a separate pump. And this oil goes over here into the liner. 
your liner has got six holes so it has got six branches all are connecting together and then it is connected like this to the pump okay so i have shown just one over it but it is circumferentially on all the ports okay so this cylinder oil comes over here and it is there to lubricate between the piston ring and the cylinder liner now first thing you want to say is sir why two different grades yes well suppose i did not have this crankcase i would be i would have to use this oil for over here and all these purposes first thing now this oil is costlier than this oil first of all comes is need both of them are required for two different purposes see how the cylinder oil that is required over here needs to be highly basic so it has got a tbn of 70 say tbn of total base number of 70 that means 70 mg of koh right so why this is 70 mg koh per kg is required because over here in this combustion chamber we have got a lot of sulfur dioxide lot of sulfur trioxide which will form sulfuric acid inside and we have to neutralize that again this oil once comes out is of no use so we maintain that very little oil is sent so that minimum oil is drained out on the contrary when i talk about crankcase oil this oil goes and then comes back this oil goes and then comes back most importantly this oil is not as costly as this why because this oil does not come in touch with combustion chamber so we have got a tbn of 6 so less additives less costly moreover it is it is used for years together if there is no problem in the oil every week we do some kind of lube, lube oil test on the ship itself whether there is water content how is the viscosity over here if there any fresh water is inside so carbon residue is how much in the lube oil we check that itself on the ship itself we have got that lube oil testing kit on board so if any problem we rectify that so what is the advantage out here by having this stuffing box in between suppose if we had been using first of all this 70 tbn oil would have been used over here suppose a lot of lube oil required very costly okay fine second thing is had this stuffing box not been there if any of these piston rings would have been damaged the combustible gas would have directly gotten into the tank and made dirty all this lube oil 13,000, 10,000 of lube oil, 10,000 of lube oil would have, 10,000 liters of oil would have immediately become dirty. We don't want that to happen. That is why two different systems. Clear guys? And this is very, very important for you to understand. On the contrary, when I talk about a four-stroke engine and generator, is it is very different. There we have got only one sump over here. And that always being sent to crank pin a main bearing that all is being sent to crank pin bearing and through the connecting rod it goes to the piston as well and i'll be drawing the drawing right now okay copy it jai Matari. this section gives an explanation about the lubricating oil used in marine diesel engines in a crosshead two cycle diesel engine the cylinders and the crankcase are separated and the cylinder liners are therefore supplied with cylinder oil while the components in the crankcase are lubricated with system oil. Injected fuel is exploded and combusted in the cylinder and the resulting thermal energy is converted into kinetic energy. The number of revolutions of a large two-cycle engine is approximately 100 rpm and the explosion and combustion time is long, which is why low-grade fuel can be used. However, this forces the cylinder oil lubricating the cylinder liners to work under severe conditions of extremely high temperature and high pressure. 
as HFO has a high sulfur content of about 3 to 5 percent, its combustion generates sulfuric acid, which causes corrosive wear of the piston liners. Cylinder oil with a viscosity grade of SAE50 and a total base number, TBN, of 50 to 70 milligrams KOH per gram is used to neutralize the generated sulfuric acid. In addition, the oil must quickly wash away the generated soot and combustion residue from the cylinder liner in order to prevent abnormal wear. Carbon and combustion residue on the pistons must also be immediately removed to prevent this residue from sticking to the piston rings and in the ring grooves and to maintain cleanliness. System oil is used for lubrication of the main bearings, crankshaft, crosshead pins, crosshead sliding surfaces, gears and camshafts in the crankcase, as well as the hydraulic transmission systems including the rocker arms driving the exhaust valves, and also for cooling the pistons exposed to intense heat from the backside of pistons. Adequate viscosity, heat resistance and stable base number are therefore necessary for the maintenance of adequate reasonable lubricity.